Well, thank you much, Steve. And hello and welcome to all of you out there in the land of webinar to the CBT Nuggets IT Expertise, three ways to get business wireless experience. My name is Jeremy Chara. I want you to take a journey with me in your mind for just a second to a coffee house near you. You escape the office for a little while just to kind of go in the zone and work on a spreadsheet or some web development or whatever it is that you do. Order up the mocha triple shot iced thing that's over there on the side and you start to do your work, but it starts to load really slow. I mean, you're trying to get your Office 365 spreadsheet up or, you know, log into GitHub and it's it just, it's, it's brutal. I mean, you start getting 404 errors. If you're like me, for a moment, you kind of pause, you look up at the, you know, people that are wandering around the coffee house just to, you know, bide some time, hiding the frustration that you're feeling right then. You look down, refresh a couple times, and it's not too long before that mocha doesn't taste as good. And you start looking around, you're like, this coffee house really isn't that great of a place to be. And you start thinking of, where else can I go? You pull up your iPhone, disconnect it from the wireless and Google, you know, coffee houses in the place. I mean, there's, there's a weird impact that bad wireless has on our psyche. So much so that, number one, it, it's hugely frustrating when you can't uh, connect and get internet access. But on, I would say, the, the more damaging side, it actually damages the reputation of the business where you're using the wireless and even inside of your own company. If you have that uh, poor wireless area of the building, I mean, your entire opinion of the IT department just falls. And it's no secret as well. The cat is out of the bag. Organizations know wireless is a problem and managers everywhere are frustrated that IT can't just fix it because it's not just something that you throw a wireless access point at it and ta-da, the problem is solved. So a lot of employers are starting to ask, hey, Tell me what you've really done in wireless. Uh, yeah, okay, yeah, I know you got the certification, that's great, but what have you really done? And that's what I'm here to tell you in this webinar. How do you get real world wireless network experience? Now, a few months ago, I actually had a webinar that was called uh, Beyond CCNA Into the Server Room, where I spent a lot of time talking about building things in your house that meet business objectives. And I talked about some of the projects that people can do and why this is such a great way to learn. And I'm not going to repeat that information. If you are interested in that, Google that, Beyond CCNA Into the Server Room. That'll take you straight to that webinar, and you can dive into that. Here, I want to cut straight to the chase and say, what can you do specifically around wireless? Three things. Number one, familiarize yourself with radio frequency. And let me actually jot right in there, focused radio frequency. <laughs> because this is where a lot of people die when they get into wireless networking is they crack open the book and they find out the first six chapters is all around radio frequency and they're learning sine curves and all of the waveforms that are used to transmit data over wireless. And it's not so much that the information is hard. It, it is. It's hard information to grasp. But you start around chapter three getting into that gut level feeling like, okay, how does this really impact my ability to deploy a wireless network successfully? So you've got to zone in on exactly what kind of radio frequency information you need. I would say namely, number one, zone in your focus on the 2.4 and 5 gigahertz radio frequency spectrums. Those are the wireless spectrums that are used. And if you have any familiarity with wireless whatsoever, you know that. 2.4 gigahertz, we're trying to kill. <laughs> That's because it's oversaturated and there's not enough clean channels to use to give us the ability to deploy a wireless network well. If you are only running 2.4 gigahertz, chances are good you're going to have a bad wireless experience or at a minimum, an unstable wireless experience. And I know a lot of people are like, well, 2.4 goes farther, right? Isn't that the big thing about 2.4 is that you get an increased range? Well. I will say the perspective of wireless has changed quite a bit. We're no longer after range. As a matter of fact, we're not after range. We're trying to contain the range of wireless because when you lay out a floor plan of a business and you start putting in wireless access points to cover all the various areas of that business, obviously there'd be rooms and drywall and all that kind of stuff in there. If that wireless network broadcasts too far, it's really hard to get a frequency that doesn't compete and just turn to mush with all the others. So we're much more after designing a floor plan that looks like this, where 
where you've got a wireless access point with a very limited range that has, yes, some overlap with the neighboring wireless access points, but doesn't, you know, consume half the building where the people out here are getting really poor performance anyway. And <laughs> this, this looks like kind of kind of fun. Um, all the, you're getting really poor performance over there in the uh, bottom of the building, but also you're getting a major signal overlap. So farther is not better anymore. And that's where all of our eyes are turning over to the five gigahertz range because this one gives us smaller, more condensed cells of wireless signal. In addition, it gives you a ton more wireless channels that you're able to use over the 2.4, which only has three clean channels that you're able to select, channel one, six, and 11. So understanding those pieces of radio frequency, and by the way, radio frequency is just a slice of time in the air. The channels really dictate what radio frequency you're using. 2.4 is a spectrum of wireless. There's multiple frequencies in there. And to make it simple, somebody came up with this idea of a channel, which really just says, okay, I'm using the radio frequency from 2.401 all the way up to 2.409 or whatever that, that channel encompasses, right? You need to be able to understand receive signal strength indicator, signal to noise ratio, because there's always noise in the air when you're dealing with wireless. See, here's the weird thing about wireless. You are taking a step backwards, a huge step backwards compared to wireless, uh, I should say wired technology with your ability to ensure a stable connection. Think about it this way. When you plug in that ethernet cable, you are plugging in a shielded copper connection that you know goes to the other end of the building. Now there may be times where you get somebody with a rolling chair that makes the cables all smushed and bad and you know you've got to replace the cable, but you know if you've got a cable there, it is a solid connection. Wireless takes out that whole foundation. That's what a lot of people miss is wireless introduces a whole new level of complexity that we never had to deal with in the ethernet world. Think of your OSI model, physical data link network. We just always assume the physical layer is good, right? Well, in the world of wireless, we can't assume that anymore. So one of the best things that you can do is grab a spectrum analyzer and you can go overboard with this. I'm, I'm telling you, I have searched and searched and searched. There are all kinds of spectrum analyzers out there. This little guy is the cheapest one that I found to get started. It's called the RF Explorer. It's sold by some little company called Nuts About Nets. And honestly, I think it's just a guy in his garage that sells these things, but I bought one and it works pretty well to be able to detect the wireless spectrum. Now, don't assume, and, and I've, I've got to make sure that, that I uh, emphasize this, don't assume because you can do this with the wireless card in your computer that you will be able to do a spectrum analysis with your wireless card. For instance, I could just hit the start button on my computer and type in Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi analyzer. There we go. Little uh, Microsoft app I downloaded from uh, the, the Microsoft store which allows me to see the different wireless networks that are there. Now, where I'm at right now, this is, I was thinking that's not right. You know, where I'm at right now is I'm looking, I'm seeing, okay, Resolution Tech, that's the wireless network I'm connected to. There's some other wireless networks out there. I'm looking at 2.4, I can click the button and zoom in. Or actually, sorry, that was the five gigahertz. Uh, this is the 2.4, it's just a mess of all these overlapping networks of all the buildings that are sitting around me. And then just to throw that, the, the, the nail in the coffin, if you will, someone just shot up a giant network here on channel nine, which is totally, uh, I can't tell you how much that annoys me when somebody does that. They're like, oh, pick channel nine. Nobody else is using it. Yes, nobody's not using it. Nobody's using it for, for a reason. It really hoses up all of the networks all around you. So anyway, um, d don't look at this. I'm, I'm, I'm totally just getting on a soapbox of whoever V2 Trading is. Um, but don't look at this and say, oh, look, I can do spectrum analysis. This is not the same thing. Your wireless card is geared to see wireless networks only. It doesn't see noise. See, here's, here's the big thing that you get into with the wireless world. It seems like it's working fine today and tomorrow and maybe next week. And then all of a sudden, everybody's performance is really bad. And you don't know why. And you're looking and you're seeing, you know, the wireless network and you're like, oh, maybe it's those V2, you know, V2 trading guys. So you change channels and it seems to work okay for a little while and then it's really bad. And you just get that unreliable, unstable, inconsistent sort of uh, environment that most people are used to with wireless. That's because you're not looking at the RF spectrums. Wireless cards are not geared to see the RF spectrum. They're geared to see wireless networks. This is where you can see noise. For example, you see that red bar right there? 
This is a common view called a waterfall view in RF technology where you can see all of this. It's like uh, blue. This is good. This is good. And all of a sudden you've got this thing right here that is just slamming your wireless network. What's it from? I don't know. Could be a microwave oven. Could be one of those IP cameras that are trying to transmit wirelessly. That's just sending a constant stream of data that's sabotaging your ability to use the radio frequency. There's all kinds of stuff that it could be, but you won't see it unless you have a spectrum analyzer and you're really familiar with it. I know when I got started with wireless and I pulled this thing up, I was like, ah, it looks scary and complex and colors and it didn't fit into my logical brain of ones and zeros and type this command and it does this. But once you get familiar with what this thing does, it will become invaluable to you. Now keep in mind as you dive into radio frequency, wireless just sends zeros and ones through the air. When I talk to people about radio frequency, I have to constantly remind them of that because it does get wooly and complex and people are going, ah, oh, my brain hurts. And it's usually around then I go, hey, 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 remember all of this stuff that we're talking about, all of this stuff right here, we're just trying to send a zero and a one over the air to the other side, right? And it's almost like a, a, a grounding technique. <laughs> I don't know why Cars 3 just popped into my head where uh, uh, Lightning McQueen turns to Cruz and he's like, think of your happy cloud, right? So that's your happy cloud statement. When you get too complex with radio frequency, remember, wireless is just there to send zeros and ones through the air. It's our happy cloud. So the second thing that you can do, three tasks that you can do to gain business wireless experience. How, learn how to perform a site survey. A site survey is where you literally go to a location. Now, I have a location right here, which happens to be a church where I did a site survey in the IT Expertise Wireless series, where I walked through and did an actual site survey of that location going in each and every building. But it doesn't have to be a real building like this. This could be your house. Put up your home floor plan. If you don't have one, draw one. You need a floor plan when you're doing a site survey and determine what is the best locations to put a wireless access points. And again, I wanted to emphasize range is not your goal. Go with low power density, always thinking about two-way communication. So here's, here's the biggest, if, oh man, if I could get you to take one thing away from this webinar, it would be this. You're, you, you know, you're, you got your phone, right? Or your laptop or, or whatever device you've got. And you see in the corner, you know, the little wireless bars, man, my little fat marker can't draw these two well. So you got you, your little wireless bars and you're like, check that out. I've got four bars. This should be an amazing wireless signal because you're seeing from that phone's perspective, the level of power that it's seeing from the wireless access point, which exists, we'll just say somewhere over here, radiating wireless signals in all directions. Well, that wireless access point has a way bigger antenna and much more power than your little handheld device would have because it's plugged into power over ethernet. It's got all the power in the world to generate a wireless signal out there. This guy is designed to conserve battery life, right? So it not only has a smaller antenna, most of the time internal, how long has it been since you've seen a little, you know, uh, rubber duck antenna sticking out of your cell phone? Long time. So it's most of the time internal around the side of it or something like that. And it's in power conserve mode. So it has to get back. That's one of the biggest things people miss when they're getting to wireless communication is this is a two way deal. Just the fact that you see a strong signal on your, your laptop does not mean that you can join that. I'm sure you've tried that before, right? You're, you're sitting at a, a coffee house or just, you know, in your car waiting before you go into an appointment and you see a really strong open wireless network and you try to join it and it says, Oh, sorry, uh, error couldn't join this wireless network for some reason. Now there's, there's a lot of reasons you could get that error, but one of the reasons why is somebody may have their wireless access point broadcasting really powerful and your little device shows it is really powerful, but it can't get back to that wireless device. So what we do is always design our wireless with the lowest common denominator, low power. Try to make your wireless access point somewhere in the realm of what your clients will be. And that's tuning the power down to get smaller cells of wireless. Understand the impact of materials when you're designing that floor plan. Drywall has a different density than solid brick and mortar that it's going through. I was uh, actually in this, um, in the, when I walked to this church, uh, in that, that uh, wireless series I did at CBT Nuggets, I was going through and I was measuring all this kind of stuff. And I got through right here and all of a sudden the wireless signal just died. I was like, what's the deal? And, and I, I didn't realize it because uh, you couldn't see it, but this whole wall right here 
was added on. It was solid brick, but they put drywall on the outside of it, so I couldn't tell. And it actually took me a while to actually go, oh, okay, there's actually a brick wall in between the drywalls that are there, which just sucked up all of the wireless. So when you're thinking about where to put your wireless access point, it hugely impacts the kind of materials that you're going through. Then grab your floor plan, walk the location, and I call this a gut level plan, uh, where you can go around and just see the different rooms, see where you're going to have your devices. And a lot of people, again, that come from that range mindset are thinking, okay, well, I need to put a wireless access point like right there so I can, you know, get that, you know, centralized, no, nope. eh, eh. <laughs> wrong answer. Range is not your goal. Try not to put one right in the middle of the building. That's probably not the best location. You want to put one close to where the people are going to be. Set them up something like that to where you've got a huge amount of coverage. You can tune these guys way down on different channels so that people can get a really good performance in the stadium seating or auditorium or wherever those people are going to be using their wireless because you're looking at where are the users going? Where's the density of users? That's what I call a gut level site survey. The other ways that you can do it is using some site survey software. And this is where you're taking the leap because this is not cheap stuff. Ekahow and Air Magnet are the two, I would call name brand site surveys. There's a lot of other ones out there and I talk about those in the series, some cheaper ones that, that you can use. But I mean, if you're really going into wireless and you're going all out, I mean, you probably want to grab one of these and you're looking somewhere between $3,000 and $5,000. This is where it actually lays out the floor plan. You import it. You actually designate all of the different materials. You, you, you outline this thing and say, okay, those are brick. This is a drywall wall. And it literally generates and says, okay, based on where, what you've told me and where you've told me the density of users are, this is where you should put all of the different wireless access points to do that. So it not only does that's known as a predictive survey, but it will also do a post survey meaning you'll walk the building with your laptop or tablet in hand and it will measure all of the wireless signals that you're receiving so it can tell you, were you successful? Is there interference happening that you can't see right now that you want to adjust for? And I'll tell you, if you're really good in wireless, that's not a one-time thing that you do because the air changes, the, the, the tenants around your building may change, the people using it may change. So you would wanna do this sometimes on a quarterly basis, on a semi-annual or at least an annual basis. I was actually uh, talking to a guy that this is his business, this is all he does, and he works in hospitals and they call him out once a week once a week to walk the entire hospital and do a site survey to make any adjustments because they use so much wireless equipment and it's so critical, obviously, where you're working, uh, it's so critical that that stays in a great signal area that they, they are more than willing to pay for a site survey once a week to make any tuning and adjustments around that. He created a whole business around just that. All right, the last thing that I would suggest that you do to gain wireless experience, task number three, is troubleshoot and dream a little. Here's what I mean by that. When it comes to wireless, most of the troubleshooting is very rudimentary. Most of the troubleshooting that I've seen out there because people get really frustrated when it, when it comes to wireless and it's very easy to move their laptop to another location. So they'll have slow wireless performance, even IT people, and they're like, oh, I'll just, I'll just go sit over here. I'll, I'll just, you know, I don't want to sit in the lobby. I'll sit in this room or move to this location because it's, it's, it's something that they just don't want to get into because they've gone there and they play the reboot game. That's how most people troubleshoot wireless uh, challenges is they'll be in a location, let, let's say something like this, and there's a, you know three wireless access point, and they're like, oh, okay, we're getting poor performance, let's reboot all the laptops. No, that didn't do it. Okay, reboot that WAP, reboot that WAP, reboot that. And, and, and eventually things start to improve, and they're like, see, hey, I, I, I solved wireless because I rebooted everything, right? It must just be these bad WAPs or these bad laptops. And that, that, that could be the case sometimes, but most of the time what's happening is when you're rebooting the devices, they're jumping to different different channels and different wireless frequencies. And if you don't have the tools that you need to be able to troubleshoot that, that's all you can do is play the reboot game and just kind of roll the dice. Um, there's there's a, a, a picture that just popped in my mind of, um, you've probably seen it, it came through email forwards for probably the last decade or so, where uh, it's an image of what looks like an airline cockpit and it shows you know men at the top and women at the bottom. And the, the, the men have the uh, the single button and the women have all of the you know, the controls and knobs and widget and uh, you know it's, it's supposed to be funny. Uh, but uh, but uh, what I did is I, I took that in the, in the series I created at CBT Nuggets, I crossed it out and I said, this is Ethernet. This is wireless. 
With Ethernet, it was so easy. There's a single button. You click the cable in and it's done. Your physical is no longer something you have to think about. But when it comes to wireless, the physical is all of these knobs and widgets and all this kind of stuff. And this is why most people throw in the towel. The, the towel, the towel is because there's too many things. It, it's They don't have a methodology that they can go at it. And you really need to create one. What is your strategy when you run into wireless issues? And to compound this issue, there's a whole lot of cheap equipment out there. Uh, literally, when I went out to uh, troubleshoot the student lab, the school had bought uh, these laptops that were $199 a piece. It was one of those fire sales, and, and all the laptops were 2.4 gigahertz only, and, and it was just brutal when we were taking the exam to try and troubleshoot that, and we couldn't figure it out. We thought it was the laptops at first because it was such cheap hardware until I opened up the Spectrum, and, uh, Spectrum, Spectrum Analyzer, if I could say that, um, at the site, and we saw that there was this massive amount of interference taking out an entire set of channels that the laptops were trying to use where literally some of them just couldn't get online at all. And if you don't have those tools, then you're right. All you have to do is go to that reboot game. You're, you're just trying to reboot things around to try and move them around, which never permanently solves the problem and never feels makes you feel good as an IT person. Reboots do not make you feel good. They're like a toxin in your soul. That will eventually make you hate the IT profession because there's no science behind it. It's all just, you know, reboot to solve things. So when it comes to wireless, embrace troubleshooting and dream a little bit. Meaning there are all kinds of cool ideas that you can think of uh, and do them. And I'll, I'll tell you, I'll tell you my dream at just just uh, at the end of this. Um, one of the things, again, going back to the uh, IT expert wireless series, um, I went up to uh, Forest Lakes, Arizona, where my parents have a, a cabin where they had internet access. And I went to the neighbor uh, who doesn't have doesn't have internet access, and I said, "Hey, would you split the bill uh, if if I beamed it over?" And and we did. And that that was a whole video where it's me setting up the the two wireless access points and doing a point to point wireless bridge to share internet access between those. That was just an idea that I had because I was like, man, this would be fun to do. But you could, you know, bridge buildings, set up neighborhood Wi-Fi, go into the coffee house that's having the poor wireless performance because we all run into them, right? And and just say, hey, can I talk to the manager and just be like, hey, I'm, I'm you know, I'm in the IT profession. I would love to, you know, help troubleshoot your wireless. Could, would you mind? And they, they'd probably be like, oh, that would be so awesome. And just be, yeah, I'll do, it. I'll do it for a hundred bucks or I'll do it for free. You know, I come to this coffee house all the time. Give me free coffee for a year. <laughs> see, you see how my mind works, right? Give me, give me, give me something. Um, and I would be happy to fix your wireless and just throw yourself into that. Um, long range wireless. There's a lot of stuff that you can buy online. A lot of it. And I'll throw this, this brand out there. I have a lot of fun with it because it's really cheap. You big, you big, I'm going to quit T probably going to spell it wrong. It's hard when you're talking and, and, and saying, if, if that's spelled wrong, ubiquity. Uh, no, it's not Y it's uh, it's I see, I knew I would do that. Um, <laughs> now my pen stopped working. There we go. Ubiquity uh, is a company that makes really effective, low cost wireless. And one of the cool things that they make is uh, long range wireless. I mean, the ability to shoot miles and miles and miles or kilometers and kilometers wherever you are in the world. Uh, a ton of cool case studies where uh, they also do solar, uh, where people are uh, setting up these little solar, you know, panels and boxes and setting up a wireless bridge in there. They're beaming wireless, I mean, across entire, uh, you know, giant plots of land to the other. Anyway, it, there's so much cool stuff out there. And I'll, I'll tell you my dream. This is what I'll, I'll end with. I would love to build a WISP. If you've never heard of a WISP, uh, you should Google it. Wireless internet service provider. Uh, a lot of them are popping up all over the place where you can actually lease space on towers, like, you know, go to a city uh, and, and say, hey, I want to put up a little dish right there and, you know, connect with a, a service provider there to run fiber up to your little dish. And you can, you know, start building your own little wireless internet service provider for your area that you're in, maybe your neighborhood. And you offer, you know, people wireless connection, wireless internet connections for, you know, $9 a month. Or, you know, obviously there'd be a, a ton of planning and, and strategy around this. But I, I always think, man, if we could just start that simple, if I, if I could just start that simple and, and build this, this wireless internet. So anyway, you see what I'm, I'm dreaming with you right now. We're, we're dreaming together. This is how you really dive into wireless and really gain a passion and an understanding for everything in the world of wireless. Whew, I got a 
<laughs> Got to simmer down for just a minute. So last thing I will will uh, say is this this is a lot of what I built in that series I keep mentioning uh, that we just released on CBT Nuggets called IT Expertise, Building and Configuring a Business Wireless Network. Uh, I went into a lot of the certification. And there's a lot of great certifications on wireless out there. Um, but there was a lot of stuff as I dove into uh, uh, the certification realm where I was just like, ah, you know, it was the six chapters of radio frequency. And I was like, this is good if you really want a lot of that, that truly deep understanding. But a lot of people just don't have time for this. I just want to show them exactly what they need to dive into. and get. I mean, you can see it's, it's four hours and seven minutes for the uh, entire series just to dive in and get started with wireless. Here's Here's the, 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 we'll say, barrier of entry material to get, get you past that barrier of entry when you get into wireless, to get you past the, I'll just reboot everything to, to try and make it work okay again. That was really my aim in building this series. I highly commend it to you. So lastly, let me open this up to any questions that you guys might have. And th this could be anything that's been rolling around through your mind through this entire presentation. And there's actually some that have been chatted in while I've been talking. So let me start with those.